When I look at a game like that, you talk about managers being proactive. Before the Panama took the lead, I think he was talking to Musa. Maybe Musa was about to come on. Why do you not make those changes early? You went to five at the back. You brought on Carter Vickers for me. And for me, I felt that you could have probably bought on Miles Robinson instead. I feel Miles Robinson's a better defender. When I look at the midfield and the energy that the players put in, it's so difficult to play against 10 men. They did so well. They were organised, compact, one or two moments to, to make counter-attacking situations. You've got to bring on Musa. You've got to bring on in midfield someone who's going to be an actual ball winner and win the ball and make things happen and got energy to still get forward. Because all the players who are still on there had already put an effort in. I think Weston had put in a great shift. You got Musa to bring on. I feel for me, if I was Haji Wright, I would be feeling the type of way with the season that he's had that Pepe came on before Haji Wright. And when you look at a game like that, the physicality aspect, getting in behind, holding up the ball, Haji Wright, I felt, could have bring on a lot more to this team. You brought on Sargent on the 86th minute. Another player, high energy. You're playing against a team with a, 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 a one-man advantage. You need energy. You need people going to get around, run around. He had options to bring on earlier, where if you come out with a draw, you'd probably be saying, that is absolutely brilliant. It really is a great result for USA. The red card did change the game, but credit to them. They took the lead and they come out with a point. But because I felt that you weren't proactive enough in the substitutions that you made, you cost yourself. And for me, when I look at that goal again, when you look at the goal again, if we can run the goal again, uh, please, Jen. Which one? The winning goal for Panama. Mm -hmm. I would say we talk about football intelligence and awareness about players and coaching. And for me, Carter Vickers there. You look at that, you two for two at the back centre backs there. You cannot let the attacking player get in front of you. And that's about being aware and football intelligence. At this level there, you're going to be killed. It's a great finish, half volley strike. But for me, Carter Vickers has got to be aware of the danger. You're in 100%. the box, space does not score. Mm. Man scores. So that's why you've got to be, I'm holding, I'm next to you. I'm right there next to you. And just to go to your point about getting under people's skin and stuff like that. Like I said, I've got Italian friends. When we played Italy under 21 years ago, I found out some nice Italian words to say to some of the Italian just friends. Just words? Yeah, it was just words. But I put him on his derriere and then I gave him the words. And then he was gobsmacked that I knew Italian. So you're going to get that in the game. There's ways to I get I mean, around. Panama did it too, didn't they? What did you think, by the way, Tony, of the substitutes that Greg made? Did you, did so, you disagree <clears throat> with them too? Yeah, well, here's where I, I disagreed at halftime, right? Because I, I said at halftime, we, I, I sat here in the CBS uh, watch room. We, yeah, I was with all the guys last night, and we watched it on the big screen. And everyone was saying, yeah, we got to get Gio off the field. And I said, no, Gio's the one guy I don't want to take off the field. They said he's pinned back as a right back after we win a man down. And he was. But the one guy I thought that could give us an outlet that could, is good with the ball, is a good passer with the ball. You can play him in tight spaces with Gio Reyna. So we went from a 4-4-1, which is generally the formation that most managers go to when they go a man down. It's a 4-4-1. You, you sacrifice a forward. Then we come out of the dressing room. Gio comes out. Cameron Carter-Vickers, okay, there's a discussion about who, but Vickers is his next center back. But it told me that he was going with three center backs, and I thought, okay, that's to get the wing backs forward. But what did Panama do? They put five across the front. Now all of a sudden, all five of those guys were pinned back. Yeah. And if you watched our three midfielders, all they did was go sideline mm -hmm. to sideline. Side side. And they used Just up that. so much. Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, and it was Johnny Cordoso that came in, used so much energy because they had no forwards in front of them to deal with the sidelines. I couldn't believe how much running they did from sideline to sideline, wasting energy for nothing. So we went into a mode where we were going to protect 1-1 at the 45th minute of the game. So you can argue who you want to put in, which players you wanted, who you, was it Musa, was it Johnny, was it somebody else? But we, we took a stance that told me we're going to protect 1-1. And you guys know, when you give the ball to somebody for 45 minutes, eventually something's going to happen. Yeah, but for me with that, Tony, I don't mind that because obviously it's not too bad because still in that formation, they had moments. Like we talk about Pepe's chances, but you've got to look at the players that yeah, you have. Yeah, one moment. Yeah, one moment. But it was okay. a great ball by Anthony Robinson, 60, 40 yards, 50 yards. That was a great flick on by Ricardo Pepe and uh, was a Weston McKinney, right, to turn the corner? No, no, it was the Pepe's the, header, the free header that he had in the back stick a bit. That's that Weston really, McKinney yeah, that Weston turned McKinney the corner, right? I'm, I'm he, pretty sure it's Weston McKinney. Yeah. But yes, yes, But Weston's Pepe is still going backwards in. on a header, which is super frustrating. Even I was screaming. This but, is yeah, but okay. But the point is, as a, as a manager, you've got to think right. It's about the 70th minute, or whatever it is. It's still one-one. 
you can seal this game on. But look at the players you can bring on in the sense that my, that's my point of saying of bringing Musa on, who we know he's got the energy, he's got the attribute. You're, the, you're missing my point about Musa. My point is, were we in danger when we were in a 4-4-1? Did we look like we were in peril when we went a man down? No. Did we look like we were under it when we went a man down? For me, no. We were a man down. You don't have as many attacking moments, but did we look like we were in trouble? I didn't think so. And then all of a sudden, you pin us back even further, mm -hmm. and credit to Christensen, the manager, he put five forward. Yeah. And all of a sudden, nobody now can get forward. Well, because when that first goal went in after the red card, did you think, okay, the U.S. is going to be able to manage this game? We did. We managed it until yeah. the end okay. of the half. Yeah. We were okay. Yeah. Well, what does this mean now, obviously, moving forward? Because the reality is it makes the chances of getting out of this group extremely yeah. slim. But I feel like the bigger question is surrounding Greg's future it yet is. again. Because will he still be the manager if, he, the, if the U.S. don't get out of the group? despite how the game went no, because you can't you have to put put aside how the game went it is what it is we have an opportunity to go through the real shame is had we been able to hold on to that one one we'd at least have control of our own destiny we no longer have that we need to win against Uruguay win by a lot no not necessarily win by a lot we just need Panama to not win by a lot and maybe we can get through it, look there's a lot there's a lot we need that said Everyone on this desk at different times, whether it's this, this group, other groups, everyone keeps using this whole, this term, signature win. Greg doesn't have a signature win. Well, you have been handed an opportunity to have a signature win. You're going to go up against Uruguay. I don't, I wouldn't consider us having a good, a good chance against Uruguay. I think Uruguay is the best team in CONCACAF since uh, Bielsa got there. That said, you want Oof. a signature win? Win this game. You want to show me you, you deserve to be the manager of this team come World Cup 2026 in this country? Win this so, game. So does Greg's future hinge on this next game, Tony? <clears throat> yes. The, the answer is yes, but my question is why? Why? We're, we're, we're pinning a, a managerial career on one game. Mm. We know anything. My, I look at it. Are we going in the right direction? I said on the Call of What You Want last night podcast, it was myself, Brian McBride, Charlie Davies last night. I said, I haven't seen an improvement since 2022. I was okay with everything that happened in the World Cup. Some people wanted to beat the Netherlands. I don't think we were better than the Netherlands. We got out coached against the Netherlands. Okay, I'm fine with that. But I still don't think that we had a player that could make that Netherlands team. But I haven't seen an improvement since December of 2022. And, and to, to think that you're going to judge the manager on one game, mm -hmm. that just drives me crazy. But then I love Tony. But then Tony, shouldn't he be have, so wait, they haven't shown progress, but you think he should keep his job? No, well, the answer, well, I'm saying the answer is yes, because that's how everybody's going to look at it. But I don't think, we, you, you I, I'm think looking at the progress. Size, There's a bigger picture than, than 90 minutes of, of, a, uh, of a coaching career. And at this point, this team has not gotten better. I, I, listen, I, I agree to Tony. Tony obviously will know a lot more than I do, but I understand Tony's point. And that's the thing, as a player or a fan or a coach, whatever it is, you want to see progress. And if you haven't seen progress in so long, something has to change. And then just to go back to your point, so you're saying basically from yesterday's game, you felt Greg went a bit too negative in how he changed it formation-wise for the second half and sort of just been a bit more brave to approach the second half and see how the game flows. 100%. Okay, does anybody have the U.S. still getting out of the group? No. Also, I uh, said CONCACAF, and Uruguay is incomparable. Just wanted to correct myself. But last night was very CONCACAF. Yeah, that was Between the, the two most CONCACAF. And the referee, that was CONCACAF. 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 CON